Hey guys, I'm Stephanie and this is Steph Stove and today we are going to be making peach jam from fresh peaches. So I picked up these peaches right here from our local peach shed that's in the neighboring county and they are smelling absolutely delicious. So we are going to put them in jam jars and we are going to do a water bath method to um, store them, preserve them so you can keep them up to about 12 to 18 months on in your pantry or you can just eat them fresh and they'll be good just a couple of weeks in the refrigerator. All right, one of the first things that we are gonna do is be sure that our peaches are nice and clean. Um, and some people go ahead, just go ahead and cut them, but I still wash things before I cut them because it doesn't matter what's on the outside. If I cut it, I don't want whatever bacteria or dirt and debris can go on the inside. So I am going to put some of this on my peaches over here. So this is just regular Dawn dish soap. And I'm going to wash these off gently. Make sure you get all of the soap off of them. And then I'm going to put them on here to towel dry. So I don't want this extra moisture in my peaches when, when I cut them. I really want them just the sugar that I'm going to put them in here. So we're going to wash all of these and put them to dry, dry them off, and then move on to our next step in the peach jam process. All right, I've got all of my peaches washed and now so I'm gonna come back and peel them. And this particular recipe um, for peach jam calls for six pounds of fresh peaches. And if you're not sure about how many that is, usually there are three to four peaches per pound depending on their size. So I think just to be safe in here, I think I've got um, between 18 and 20 is what I have here washed before you. So we're gonna start peeling these because we're going to wanna peel them. So I'm gonna peel off the front. So I'm gonna kinda throw this extra right here into my sink. I'm gonna peel these along. And then you're going to want to peel, core, and cut up each one of these peaches. So this is a very rewarding process of doing this, but I will say it is um, time consuming. So be sure if you're doing this that you've kind of allotted an afternoon, something that you don't have a lot to do because it will not be a quick process. It'll probably be, I would say two and a half, maybe three hours. So I'm just gonna cut these quickly. And if you notice the little seed, comes right out, there's a little core and see. Some people crafty do things with these, but I'm just gonna throw them away. You can save them and try to plant a peach tree. I've never been successful with that, but I think you could. Because in this little part right here, I'm cutting this out just because I don't like those little parts. And I'm gonna come back and cube these up in just a minute. So what we're gonna do Cut that extra out right there. I'm going to dice these into somewhat kind of smaller pieces. They don't have to be exact because again, you're gonna cook these down to the jam process. So I'm just gonna cut these up. And after you cut your peaches, remember they're fresh. And one of the things you don't want is your peach jam or your peaches to turn kind of brown. You want this fresh, vibrant, peachy tone to remain. So as you're cutting these up, you're also going to come in and you're going to add about eight tablespoons of lemon juice. And the lemon juice is just going to keep everything bright. And it's going to keep everything fresh. So I'm going to here with my tablespoon measure, take this off. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and usually I count things off so I don't forget where I am. It's important. You don't want to say, did I do two or did I do six? So I just count out loud. Um, you may have a different method, but that's what I do. Um, I will tell you also, if you're using fresh lemons for the juice, it'll be about um, three to four fresh squeezed lemons if you have fresh lemons, 
and just squeeze those. So we're gonna mix this up. And you just wanna mix these as you add your peaches to it, again, to keep them bright. I do have this in a heavy um, enamel cast coated cast iron Dutch oven that I'm gonna be cooking these in. So while we're doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and get these others chopped up and we'll be right back in just a couple minutes. I have got all of our peaches cut up. If you see, they're not really small. I've just kind of chunked them up in the pot. And at this point, I'm just making sure that I've stirred all of them. Oh, the peach smell is amazing. Um, if you've never had fresh Georgia peaches, whew, these are so delicious and flavorful and sweet. And this is peach time of year, summertime. So these are just wonderful. So different than what's in the grocery store. So what we're gonna do now, after we've covered these in the lemon juice, remember this is to ensure that we maintain the brightness of our peaches. We are going to add sugar to them. And in the recipe, we are gonna add anywhere about three cups, but you can have what I will call plus or minus half a cup. So in other words, what that means is you can go to three and a half cups, or you can do two and a half cups, depending on the sweetness of the peaches. So for here, I'm gonna do about two and a half. I'm going to use, this is a one cup, it's an old coffee cup that I use and keep in my sugar bin. So I'm going to add this, I'm going to add one, and this looks like a lot, but we are going to do something called macerate to our peaches. And what this means, we're going to soak them in the liquid. There's two. And I'm going to guesstimate half. You are soaking them to soften them. And so macerate is just a big word. And what it is, we are going to work the sugar around in our peaches and let our peaches release their own juices. Fresh fruit has their own pectin. So this particular method that I'm using, you don't add pectin to it because it already has um, the pectin from the fruit. So we are going to stir to incorporate this and we're gonna let this sit at room temperature for about one hour and you'll see a huge amount of juice come out that's gonna work as our pectin and we are gonna use that as we cook down and get ready. Another step to making our peach jam. All right, it's been about one hour that my peaches have been sitting. So now I'm going to um, open the lid and kind of reveal and see how much liquid we have that our sugar has kind of macerated out. So I'm gonna come by and I'm gonna stir this. Ooh, look at that. That is a lot of liquid that has came come off of these peaches, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just gonna kind of give it a quick stir and you can see it's very liquidy at this point, which is a good thing because not only has this give us a good sugar content for our jelly, but remember, like I said, fruit has natural pectin in it. So it's releasing it through this process. Now what we're going to do is come and turn our stove to high or medium high. Let's go to about eight. And we are going to get this to a full rolling boil. And once it comes to a boil, we're going to reduce our heat and let it continue to cook for about an hour and a half maybe even two hours until our syrup, this liquid, thickens and becomes more jelly-like. So, we are gonna go ahead and get this ready to boil. Make sure I'm kind of stirring it every so often because the last thing we want is it to stick. Um, and one thing I didn't mention earlier, you want to be sure when you're doing this, you have a heavy pot because this is gonna sit for quite a while. And the last thing you would want is for any scorching or burning on the bottom of your fruit. So we're gonna get this ready to a bowl and check on it in just a minute. All right, looks like we have a full rolling bowl going here. So I'm gonna stir it just a little bit because last thing we want is it to roll over. And then I'm gonna reduce my heat to medium. I'm gonna put mine on five and I'm gonna continue to stir it just to be sure it doesn't um, boil over. And this process right here to get it to the bowl took about mm, six minutes probably, mainly because the pot is so large. 
um, to get to this state. So I want it to go again down to medium. I turn my stove on to five and I'm gonna continue stirring this every so often. And what we're trying to do now is get this syrup or this juice to reduce to a jelly-like consistency and it will become very thick. So we're gonna leave it on medium heat, stirring occasionally just to be sure that everything is not sticking. And we're gonna let this um, continue to reduce for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. It could even take two hours. So we're just gonna have to keep watching it, but we're gonna continue to check this, being sure that nothing burns or sticks, stirring every few minutes and let this reduce. Again, this process is gonna take anywhere from an hour to two hours. So we're just gonna have to keep an eye on it so we'll check on it back in just a few minutes. As my peaches have been cooking for another about five minutes, and if you're like me, you can easily get distracted doing other things or kind of turn it away, answering a call or so forth. So um, if you'd like, it's probably a good idea to set a timer because you'll go back and think, when did I start this and how long have they been on? So it's just a good idea when you're doing something in the kitchen that is time sensitive, make sure that you do set a timer. Another trick to be sure that this does not kind of boil over because even though we've reduced our heat, our peaches are still very hot and our pot has to cool down as well. So a trick that you can do to this is, um, and I open up my butter dish here, add about half, maybe a teaspoon of butter to the mixture and it'll help from your peaches boiling over. Also, as we're getting ready and this is cooking down, remember our syrup is, it will be turning into a jelly-like consistency. In about an hour, we're gonna be ready to test that to see if it's at the stage we want. So in order to test it, when we get to that point, um, we're gonna take a plate, and this is a real plate, and we're gonna put it in the freezer. And this is gonna chill the plate. And so when we come back, you'll see we'll test the jelly on the plate in a smear test to see what our end result is when our um, syrup cooks down. So we'll check on it again in about 40 minutes. All right, it's been about 35 minutes and we are halfway through the reduction process. And as you can see, um, the peaches have reduced greatly just by the size. It was about up to here, so they have come down quite a bit in my pot. So at this point, I've still got a lot of chunky peaches, so I'm gonna come in with a potato masher. You can even do this with an immersion blender. Just my cord won't reach this far. And I'm just gonna mash some of the peaches just to get a more smoother texture. I do not want all of these large chunks. I'm leaving some, but I do want to mash it quite a bit. So I'm just going right around. And with the potato masher, you will see it's still leaving me chunks, so I don't have to worry about just getting kind of a pureed baby food type consistency. We definitely won't have that, but I'll have small bite-sized pieces in our jam. So I'm gonna go through, do just a little bit more. And then, so you can see the consistency I have here. All right, we've got about 20 more, 20 or 25 more minutes on this reduction process. And we're gonna check back in and see where we are. And we will do our smear method to see if our jam is almost ready to put in our jars. See you in a few minutes. All right guys, it's about two minutes before my timer is gonna go off, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. And if you notice, my jam is um, still reduced even more and it's boiling very quickly now. So I'm gonna turn this down to low. And at this point, remember I got my plate out of the freezer and it's very cold. I'm gonna take a little spoonful and I'm gonna put it on my plate. I'm just gonna kind of let it run down. And as I'm letting it run down, what this will do, it's just kind of simulating how my jam will set up. 
So see, it's not running, like just dripping down the pan. It's doing a great job. So I think we got a good texture. We're gonna go for just a little bit longer and then we're gonna get ready to dip these up. All right, I've let my mixture cool for just a few minutes and I just kind of took my finger and tasted it. It's ready. So I'm gonna turn my heat off on my peaches and I'm going to very carefully, you may wanna have a pot holder in your hand. I'm going to scoop this up into my jars. And it's very important that your jars are clean and dry. So make sure that you wash them thoroughly. Um, another quick and easy method to do is to run them through the dishwasher. And that's what I just did. And so I've taken my jelly jars here. And this is my canning funnel that I'm gonna put in. And I'm gonna hold these and I'm gonna fill these up see if I can get this where you can see it because it is going to be rather hot. And I'm going to take a couple of spoons. This just makes it so much easier. And a ladle. I'm going to take about a ladle. And maybe a third to fill that. I'll tap that off. Maybe just a hair more. This one. You can see this wide mouth funnel it does help so much when you're filling these things. So, we're gonna fill them just like this and we're gonna get each of our jars going. And I'm gonna take my lids, I'm gonna place the lid on your jar. And these are the bands. And again, these you wanna run through the dishwasher too. Make sure they're very clean and dry. And tighten these, just hand tighten them is all we wanna do now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill the others and we'll get ready for our next step, which is our processing water bath. All right, so I went ahead and I put all of my um, peach jam in the jars, added the lids and tightened um, the rings around, just hand tightened. And, you know, I, I can remember my grandmother doing this method too. And she would call my papa in. Sometimes he would come in from the field. He was doing stuff and he would hand tighten her jars in her little kitchen for and it was always just so excited my papa would go in there and hand tighten them so we're going to put these in and as i put them in each of the jars you're going to see there's a big lux jar in the water is going to come up so we're going to process these for 10 minutes and you do want the water to cover the lids and this is gonna keep them um, preserved where they will last much longer. So I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes and I'll see you back in 10 minutes. Our timer has just went off. So our 10 minute water bath is complete. So I'm gonna take these out very carefully and I'm gonna grab hold of my jars and I'm gonna put these on the side. In just a second, I'm gonna turn them upside down because as they come out, we should have them upside down. It's a little hot to handle. So I'm gonna try to do it with a pot holder to help me out here so I don't burn myself. And I'll turn this one upside down. And you want to do this so they feel. And as they do, you'll start hearing them pop. They'll pop where the lids will pop, showing that they have a firm seal and all of the air has been removed. So we're gonna take the rest of them out and get it's ready to go about five pop. minutes since my jam has come out of its water bath. So they're still very hot. So at this point, I'm gonna to try to flip them over because they've cooled somewhat. So I'm going to flip them back right side up. Oh, I might need my to help me out with this. Let's flip each one of them over. They are very hot, guys. Very, very hot. You can imagine they've been in boiling liquid, so they are very warm. I've 
got one still boiling because my pot wasn't quite big enough for all eight jars. So I'm just kind of letting that second one, the last one go by, by itself over there. And then when we finish, we'll have eight jars of peach jam. So as they sit here, they're sealing down. There's no pressure in them. So we're gonna let them cool completely and then check them out. Be back with you in just a few minutes. All right, guys, my peach jam has cooled off nicely. And as you can see, I ended up with eight pint jars of fresh homemade peach jam. And remember, this didn't have pectin because of the amount of pectin that's in the peaches. So it created its own. But this is a wonderful, wonderful thing to, to make. Probably I would encourage you to do it with your kids. It'd be great fun for them. And then let them enjoy the fruits of their labor. So I'm Stephanie, and this is Steph Stove. Remember, we're making memories one dish at a time. Enjoy.